Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here, Keep Canada Weird is the venue in which my pal Aaron Airport and I seek out and explore the more offbeat Canadian news stories in the past week. In tonight's episode, which we recorded on November 15th of 2023, Aaron and I cover the full spectrum of weird and unusual Canadian news. We're going to discuss that telephone pole standing proudly in the middle of a newly built road in Fredericton. We're going to take on the impossible task of understanding why a Glace Bay chicken shop is asking its customers to intervene in staff disputes. And we're going to get pissed about a confrontation caught on film involving an Alberta man who's alleged to have been in the act of trapping and killing cats. Let's get into this. Handsome Aaron Airport. It's time to get into it, buddy. But before we do, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you, my friend? Well, to be honest, I may sound a little congested. Do I? Not that I noticed, but now okay. that you mention it. Well... I'm not sick. I don't have the cold or COVID or anything weird, but I have been putting together a really old puzzle and I have nasty allergies and the puzzle is a dusty mess. Mm, okay. I saw you, uh, saw, I saw an Instagram of that. It's a new kids on the block puzzle. Yeah. I was, uh, out shopping today, thrifting and at Valley village, I found a 500 piece new kids on the block puzzle straight out of the eighties. Um, it's three feet but wide by five feet high. So it's like a poster size thing. But as I'm putting it together, I can feel like myself having an allergic reaction, either the dust or who knows what. But um, I kind of got addicted to it because, you know, when you if you ever buy a used puzzle, it's such a crapshoot on whether or not all the pieces all are the there. pieces. Yeah, so yeah. I'm frantically doing it. The first thing I did was, of course, was all the outer edges. And once they all came together, I'm thinking, you know, this is a good sign. And I just kept doing it. I'm not done yet, but I'm probably three quarters of the way through without a missing piece. Wow. I'm impressed. Thank you. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My first name is Jordan. So I have a little bit of a connection with the new kids on the block because as a child, I was often teased and uh, messed with by having um, the name Jordan, much like new kids on the block singer Jordan Knight. I don't, I, I mean, Jordan's. You know, a somewhat common name. I don't think that it was fair of them to tease you about that. Yeah, I guess so. Nor nor is it anything to be ashamed of. So, so you share a first name with, at the time, you know, a, a member of one of the biggest pop groups uh, yeah. in the world. And You're right, Aaron. I'm going to keep my chin up. Mm -hmm. So you should wear your name loud and proud and and just live your life and, and don't spend any time on the haters yeah you're right i'm just gonna block it all out before we get into keeping canada weird anything you want to tell us about anything going on well i just told you about my washing machine mistake that i made oh that's a horror story just let the listeners know but the, we should give a trigger warning if you're um mm -hmm. especially sensitive to the smell of mildew and mold you may want to skip ahead 30 seconds tell us aaron well i was just going to do laundry and I was gathering up some items from my laundry basket, and I was kind of missing some things. I'm like, oh, where are those jeans? Oh, where's that shirt at? I can't find it. And I was looking around, and then I checked the dryer, and they weren't in there. And then it dawned on me, and I'm like, oh, my God, are they in the washing machine? And I opened it up, and there it was, a pile of damp, wet clothes. And then I did the math in my head, and I realized... Oh my God, that's from Friday. Today is Tuesday. Oh, five days damp in a dark place. That yeah. sucks. Are you just going to chuck the clothes or are you going to try to salvage them? I don't know. I just I just ran the wash again and I'm going to kind of give it a smell test when they're done after this recording and I'll make a judgment call then. On behalf of myself and all the members of Keep Canada Weird Nation, we wish you and your laundry a speedy recovery and uh mm -hmm. don't, let, don't let the laundry haters get to you i think you're gonna be okay i feel good about this i i really hope so uh 
I haven't done the inventory yet of what else is in there. I know there's a pair of jeans that I like in there. Oh, God. Uh, I, I just, I don't know what shirts are in there. There is a blue shirt in there that I really like. Um, okay. this is... and I, 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 I'm worried. Yeah. That's not sounding good, but I guess we'll get an update on that next week. Cause we yeah, do, yeah. here on yeah. Keep Canada Weird, we do often revisit stories and we will be revisiting one today, but mm -hmm. we'll get to that. We got a full card. We have to keep Canada weird. We have to highlight celebrate and in one case tonight get enraged at the weird unusual offbeat out of the ordinary things that have played out across our great nation over the past week tonight's episode is going to hear discussions surrounding the poll in fredericton we're going to get an update on the kitchener xmas market christmas market we're going to i don't even know how to say this but we're going to talk about jay's chicken and ribs in glace bay and then there's a guy in Alberta trapping cats and maybe killing them. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it, Aaron. Where do you want to start with this? Well, we'll start with some voicemail, shouldn't we? Why not? We have been encouraging listeners um, to serve as correspondents for the Keep Canada Weird Army. And yeah, people have been, uh, have been stepping up to do that. Let's check in with one right now. Let's hear from... Tamara, who provides a report from the United States, and her report is regarding the animal uprising. Well, let's hear it. Good morning, Jordan, and good morning to you as well, Handsome Aaron Airport. This is Tamara calling from Colorado Springs. This morning I was scrolling TikTok while having my coffee and came across a story that made me think of the animal uprising. In India, three marsh crocodiles. Instead of making a meal of a stray dog, nudged him across the river to safety. Apparently, the researchers are a little bit stumped as to why they would do this, but I was thinking that perhaps the animals are beginning to consolidate power. Uh, perhaps one of their strategies is to recruit what is considered to be humans' best friend don't know but i think it bears thinking about also as a little postscript i'm a canadian down here i've been in the states uh five years now three in the lower 48 and um canadian treats that aren't chocolates came up i guess a little while ago for you guys and i would have to say there are three things i really miss hawkins cheesies from Belleville, Ontario. Absolutely delicious. We sometimes order them on Amazon. Macintosh's toffee, which again, I just ordered a dozen because I was missing them so much. And also Peak Freen's cookies, especially the sandwich kind, the mixed pack with the bourbon creams and the, uh, and the fruit center one. Um, I haven't been ordering those because to get them down here, it's prohibitively expensive, but I will definitely be eating some of those when I get back home. Anyways, I love your show. Um, I'll say hello and give my best to all of your hosts and contributors. Have a really great morning. Cheers for now. Let's tackle Tamara's message in, in two sections. So first mm -hmm. of all, she provided an, I guess, I don't know about an update, but a story from the animal uprising. And for people new to the show, uh, we at Keep Canada Weird have been tracking the rising, the, the escalating tension between animals and humans here on earth. And we're of the opinion, Aaron and I, that the animals are mounting some kind of offensive, thus, our term that we've coined the animal uprising is occurring uh, in Tamara's story. It involved a dog being rescued, but I couldn't make out what animal it was that was rescuing the dog and moving it across. I the thought water. it was a crocodile, wasn't it? it was, I think it was. Yeah. A crocodile mm -hmm. rescue, uh, moving an animal safely across the water. We've talked about our opinion that dogs and cats are likely going to fall when the animal uprising occurs. Why would something like a crocodile rescue a dog why would an enemy rescue its enemy, or why would a soldier rescue its enemy okay. right i i you know she touched on it uh because like you say we consider the dogs and the cats the domesticated animals to be on the human side as they've been fed and sheltered by the humans for you know generations now 
And this could be a warming up strategy uh, for the animals. They could be trying to uh, basically entice the domesticated ones to to join their side and turn against the humans, turn against us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes me nervous as I have a domesticated cat living with me. And if he were to turn on me, it would, he would win. Uh, he would, he would definitely defeat me. He's large. He's strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's fast. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's many things. And, and I don't think I could, I don't think I could defeat him in a battle. Yeah. There's certainly some strategy at play there. I don't think it's a coincidence that the crocodile passed up a meal to safely move a dog across the water. Now, what about uh, the treats that she listed as treats that are available in Canada yet unavailable in the United States where she's currently based? I didn't recognize two of them, but the one mm-hmm. I did is the Macintosh caramel. You're, you've had that. Yeah, the before. toffee, the Macintosh. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's like a, yeah. it's the, sh- it's like a large rectangle of toffee. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. My fondest memory of it is my friend Krusty and I. You know Krusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bought them one night, and I just have a memory of sitting on a set of stairs somewhere in downtown Sydney, and it took us probably about two hours each. Uh, it took us about two hours for each of us to finish our Macintosh caramel toffee things because it's like you put it in your mouth and it's you can chew it and it's a workout it's it a real a workout, workout. Yeah. yeah your jaw is sore by the end of it you've mm-hmm. got it all ingrained in the crevices of your teeth um you want to floss and your, after and then that. your tongue the workout your tongue gets when you're trying to remove all the little residue of toffee yeah Look yeah out. it's intense but worth the, the other ones i didn't recognize either i i don't i i I didn't recognize it when she said it. I guess I'd have to listen to it again and then research it a little bit to see which, because maybe I might recognize the packaging. Yeah. Or it could be something sold like, you know, in one province or something, but Mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, We enjoy hearing these types of stories, updates on the animal uprising, uh, opinions or theories or speculation. And any of the stories we covered, but we always enjoy hearing Uh, Mm -hmm. your preference for treats we'll hear from more listeners during this episode but let's get to the first story i gave you the options there what what do you want to start this with well should we start with the jay's chicken the big one or do you want to leave that let's let's let that marinate a little bit leave the chicken for dessert (laughs) uh let's start with the pole in fredericton (laughs) okay i i enjoy this story uh, I've yeah. been wanting to talk to you about this. I've been following Oh, yeah, it you've just been dying to talk about this poll in Fragmenton with, with me. Well, you know what a roundabout is, right? Yes, I do. Uh, quite controversial in my area, actually. Okay, so there's kind of two options here. When when you're driving on a road, uh, if, you're, if you're driving towards um, a perpendicular street, you can either have like a four-way stop or whatever where, you know, two roads are perpendicular to each other, such as like the letter X. That's one option when you're designing a road. The other option is a roundabout, which is rather than it forming an X, there's just a little circle, you know, in the center and everyone pulls into the circle and, you know, does loops mm-hmm. until they get to their exit and turn off. That was a weird way to explain a roundabout, but I think maybe hopefully some people followed it or have roundabouts. And I'm sure most people know what roundabouts are. I would, I would hope so. But the, mm-hmm. the, the benefit of a roundabout is it's less likely that there's going to be a serious car accident because in a regular like x-shaped intersection you have the opportunity to like t-bone someone like smoke another car uh or a head-on collision where people really get hurt in a roundabout everybody is always kind of at an an angle where it's only generally minor collisions that can happen in roundabouts there there's probably more frequent collisions but they're they're more minor as well as it should keep if everyone's using it correctly it should keep traffic flowing faster. So that's the benefit of it. Now, the city of Fredericton in New Brunswick has recently begun transforming several main intersections into roundabouts, and construction is almost done at a new one on a main road that leads right into Fredericton, New Brunswick. However, there's one detail that remains unresolved within the construction of the roundabout. It turns out that a utility pole owned by the cable company Bell, Canada, wasn't able to be moved in time. 
to meet the the deadline of the road workers. So they went ahead with construction anyway, despite this leaving a telephone pole in the center of the street. And it has it has people outraged. Listen to this news story. After a summer full of construction, where this new roundabout was built to try to improve traffic flow in Lincoln, just outside of Fredericton, a small hiccup. A pole was left standing in the actual roundabout. While they can now get from point A to point B with more convenience, a previously installed utility pole currently sits directly in the roadway. CTV News reached out to NB Power for an explanation and were told it's not one of their poles. However, crews were on site today. The city of Fredericton said the entire project changed the road alignment and elevation to address traffic flow and area flooding, which included moving existing communication and power poles. At this point, it has been marked off with barriers and tape, but it still started quite the conversation online. No one living nearby was willing to appear on camera today, but that wasn't due to lack of knowledge. Someone who lives just a few doors down told me that when he first saw the pool, he thought it was a joke. And downtown, almost everyone I asked laughed and said they had definitely heard of it. Crews told me that once the final wires are removed, the pool will be taken down, turning this conversation starter back into a regular road. Alana Pickerel, CTV News, Lincoln, New Brunswick. First of all, let me ask you this. Is this something that the city of New of Fredericton, New Brunswick should be embarrassed about having an in-service road uh, with the pole on there because they hadn't been able to schedule things properly? Like, is this justifiably a controversy? I don't know if it's controversial per se. It's just it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's stupid. Like, it how seems, did how could that happen? Yeah, it seems controversial because it's like they couldn't get like everybody knew about it but they couldn't get someone on record talking about it nobody seems to want to claim ownership of this poll yeah but i mean like in that article we just listened to it seemed like the journalist spoke to several townspeople probably hoping to get them to talk about the poll but no one would comment comment on it publicly like i think it's, it's weird deal. like there's, there's feels like there's more to this poll than meets the eye like mm -hmm. there's yeah. Maybe, and it, I mean, I, I could see if there was historical significance in an, in an embarrassing way about this poll, but I don't know. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody somebody died on this poll. I oh, <laughs> something like that. OK. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it, I none of none of this story makes sense to me. I don't I can't really understand how and why with this thing. Like how yeah. how could it? And oh. even if it's there, you're making the roundabout, you're moving the poles and you're like, just move it. Just Yeah. All I can think of is like, and this is probably their explanation, is they had a dead, the, the paving people had a day they were supposed to do their work. The pole people had a day they were supposed to move their stuff. And, you know, the concrete people were doing their stuff on a different day. But in just for whatever reason, the the person overseeing the whole job, the contractor or whatever, maybe they messed up and didn't properly schedule who does what when but the idea that they would still pave the road around a pole and just put these big concrete dividers to you know protect the cars from passing through that just seems like it would have just been worthwhile to wait till they move that pole before they pave it because now they're just gonna have to dig up that section again to move the pole and digging up a section of a brand new road it just the whole thing seems like nonsense and i think they should be ashamed and embarrassed because it's just in like these kind of things, these projects, like a new roundabout that costs so much money. So to not do it in the most efficient way is just such a disservice to all the taxpayers of Fredericton. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of government red tape, too, that like, you know, certain people aren't allowed to to do certain things. And and then when one person drops the ball, nobody else can really finish what they're doing. And mm -hmm. and then a poll gets left up in the middle of a roundabout. Yeah, so, it's it's almost like the equivalent of you're getting a house built and you got and your drywall guy he puts all the drywall on on but the you haven't had your plumber come in yet to put the pipes so you're gonna have to remove the drywall to put the pipes behind the wall you know it it just seems like it's something's dumb there. I think they should leave it up now at this point yeah, and just make a tourist attraction out of it. You know, yeah. world's dumbest pole. Yeah, the ridiculous pole. Well, people have put yeah. a little sign on it that just says like. The poll. The poll. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody's <clever>. talking. <laughs> yeah, why don't we call it the poll? Um, 
Well, it Let's, might get confused with the North and South Pole, so maybe they should really make it the Fredericton Pole. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Um, but I got uh, this story of the pole in Fredericton isn't the only nonsensical story tonight. We have plenty of them, but before we get to them, let's have an update on something we talked about last week. By chance, do you remember in our last episode the story of the Christmas market in Kitchener? There's something about that story of the Christmas market nonsense in Kitchener that we left off. We didn't spend any time on the legal implications of everything that happened. If you missed last week's episode, the organizer of two large Christmas craft market type things uh, announced that they had taken the money that all the vendors paid and they gambled it away and lost it. Uh, I believe at the time of the news articles we discussed last week, that person was actually speaking like from a hospital and receiving treatment for I believe a gambling addiction is what the article said, if I remember correctly, but we didn't talk about the legal implications, but now that part of the story is in the spotlight because Kitchener Waterloo Regional Police recently announced the arrest of a 52 year old Cambridge woman uh, charged with fraud over $5,000. I think we probably Mm. know who that is. Let's listen to a short update about it and then we can talk about this aspect of the story. It's one step towards accountability for vendors who were scammed out of hard-earned money. I'm glad she needs to pay for what she did. Waterloo Regional Police have made an arrest in connection with two failed holiday markets. The original organizer of the It's a Christmas Market and the Shopalooza Market took vendor deposits and lost them. In an interview with CTV News, Stacey Cliff admitted she lost upwards of $30,000 through gambling. Now police say a 52-year-old Cambridge woman has been charged with fraud over $5,000. That is way too many people that she scammed and way too much money. She needs to, to be held accountable to everyone, you know, so that we can feel some sort of relief. So far, police received 55 reports of fraud from vendors of the It's a Christmas Market event and 12 reports from Shopalooza vendors. More could come, as police say they believe there may be other victims who lost money from these events. Despite the hurdles, both markets found a way to survive. On Sunday, the 12th, the newly branded holiday market took place at Bingham's. Some vendors breathing a sigh of relief after the roller coaster few weeks. It's amazing. I, I actually didn't think it was going to happen. I've cried a few times today, I'll be honest. Um, it, like, I'm just filled with uh, joy and happiness. And this coming Sunday, the 19th, a market with more than 40 vendors will take place at the Hespler Legion in place of Shopalooza. We're really excited. We, we feel that it's going to be bigger and better than it, it was originally going to be. And next year's show is already booked with the Legion ready to rock and roll. So I don't think there's any surprises there that an arrest was made. It's good to hear that the markets uh, have been, you know, they'll continue in some form going forward. So that kind of saves a lot of those vendors. But my question for you is the arrest of Stacy Cliff, the woman responsible for this fraud or whatever we want to call it. When we both talked last week, we seem to kind of accept that she's uh, she's taking it on the chin she's announced what she's done she's uh, taking uh, responsibility for it and at least uh, according to her own statements is seeking treatment for a gambling addiction what do you think is necessary in this case do you think the law should take a swing at her well it's complicated mm-hmm. so i i I do understand that the gambling addiction aspect of it is a disease and that, but at the same time, you have to, you have to pay for what you did. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it is, it is gray. It's not just black and white. However, there, there does need to be a a punishment of some kind, you know, Mm -hmm. whether they'll go hard on her or, or they will be lenient, uh, you know, in terms of, I assume there'll be a trial or whatever. I don't, I don't know, but I think certainly the judge in that case will take into consideration the fact that she at least seems to have come forward, admitted what she's done, and appears mm-hmm. to be taking steps to 
yeah. uh, correct her her behavior. So that that'd be considered. But we also don't know what led to her coming forward. Maybe she did try to hide it, and the house of cards surrounding her just started to collapse, and she got in front of it. But I guess all of that will yeah. come forward in court, and I think it's it's necessary for um for a case like this uh, to get in front of a judge to look at what allowed this to happen. Cause you know, maybe something needs to change for, you know, how things like this can operate going forward in that community. Who knows? Right. There's another crime in this story too, that I wanted to bring up last week Uh-oh. and didn't. And then I saw a reminder of it this week when I was watching the footage. Okay. So I know this is an audio podcast and not all the listeners are going to be seeing the footage of this news broadcast or just going to be hearing it. However, I'll try to paint a picture here for you. So okay. throughout the the broadcast last week when we first covered this story and the new broadcast this week, there was a repeat offender hidden in both of those videos. Oh, there's a woman selling a a Halloween shirt at this uh, Christmas craft fair hmm. uh, market, essentially. I saw it in the video last week. The woman is sitting at a table. And I saw her again this week in this footage. And she's sitting there selling T-shirts that say, Hocus Pocus, I need coffee to focus. <laughs> And there's two things, two problems I have with this. Okay. It's like, one, it's Halloween. Like, this is a Christmas craft fair story. Why Why first was this woman shown to begin with sitting at a table selling Halloween shirts and then again brought back <laughs> for the second round and not filtered out like, oh, we probably shouldn't spend so much time on showing stock footage of this woman selling t-shirts that say hocus pocus i need coffee to focus <laughs> during a christmas story <laughs> about a christmas craft fair and the other issue i have with these t-shirts is that they're those you know where you where you hear like on tiktok people saying you want to make a quick buck without having to do anything here's what you do is you get a t-shirt printing company and you get a logo and you put those on, you put them up on Amazon, and then they link to your T-shirt printing account, and you don't have to do anything. And people just go on Amazon and they buy these T-shirts mm-hmm. where you just took this terrible design mm-hmm. off of the internet, and you just wrote your own words into it. Hocus pocus, I need coffee to focus, and then you just sell those T-shirts. Yeah, you're just you're it's called drop shipping. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and 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 the kind of ones that I see like. Happy Father's Day. Wish I was playing golf or something like they're just the worst ideas for T-shirts yeah. and all the laziest ideas by the laziest people. Oh, I know. And then it's like the laziest ideas by the laziest people who make them, but then also the people who buy them and then wear them. I have a little story. I've never seen anybody wearing shirts like this, though. I don't know okay, who's I buying did. them, but I've never. Have you? Yes, I was at. Uh, I'm sure they're not listening. I was at the orientation <laughs> for. Uh, I was at the orientation for uh, my child's grade primary class. Um, this was a few years back, and all the so it's like all the kids would get to see their classroom for the first time, and all the parents are there like proudly, you know, bringing in their kids, and you know, so the parents are kind of all awkwardly looking at each other and you know saying hi and nodding, uh, but there was this one guy. And he came over by me. He's like, hey there, uh, you know, which one's yours? And I'm like, yeah, that guy there's my kid. And he's like, yeah, nah, this guy's mine. He points at one of the kids. And then he look, points at his shirt and he's like, he wanted me to wear the shirt he bought me for Christmas. And, uh-huh. and, and, and he's like, see what it says? And it said on it, world's number one. It, you would think it says father, but it says world's number one farter. And he's like, well, World's number one farter. <laughs> <laughs> this is at like the orientation inside of school. And, like, like, and then there was another person. And actually, I, I don't, some of them, who knows? They could listen. But I'll, I'll call out the world's number one farter guy. 
Oh, wow. But that's yeah. another one of those shirts. Would you like hocus pocus? I need coffee to focus. But is a bit worse. World's wordy. number one farter is better than hocus pocus. I need coffee to focus. I don't know. They're both awful. But yeah, uh, thanks for pointing that out. I'm going to watch that uh, clip again after we finish up here. And yeah, and any listeners eyes. can Google, I'm sure, and find the, the both of the news clips that that hocus focus on this woman's awful t shirts. <laughs> Uh, let's get to the next story. Aaron, you're from the area of Glace Bay, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Do you have you ever heard of Jay's Chicken and Ribs or Jay's Drive-In? It seems like I see both names used for this place. Do you know this place at all? Yeah, it was always just called Jay's Chicken. What is it? Tell me about it. It's a was it well what when I always have known it as a just a chicken joint. You know, you go in and you get fried chicken and French fries and mm -hmm hate your life afterwards <laughs> the only thing i know about them is uh their social media activity and that's as a result of the story we're going to be talking to but if you up until recently if you had been following the facebook account of jay's chicken and ribs or jay's drive-in again they use both names which is a glace bay based diner sort of place their Facebook profile in activity is largely like any other small diner. You'd see regular updates showing photos of their food, uh, promotions of their dining specials. You'd see photos of soup, sandwiches, of course, their chicken wings. It would be generic, forgettable stuff that you would probably just scroll past. But all of that changed on November 7th when, when Jay's official Facebook account posted a rather mysterious update to their business's Facebook page that suggested that they had been whipping up something much more exciting than clubhouse sandwiches on white bread. I'm sure you've seen this post. It's basically gone viral for people around Cape Breton and Nova Scotia. Uh, do you want to read the Facebook post? If you have it handy. Yeah, if, uh, I'll, you... I'll get it up. Yeah, hold on. Okay. All right, I've got... Uh... All right. So Aaron, you can read Jay's, uh, you, you can read the November 7th Facebook post by Jay's Chicken and Ribs. Okay, so dear esteemed customer, our restaurant is currently dealing with an unusual situation. In the event that you arrive and happen to witness a disagreement among our staff, we kindly request your understanding. You have two options. You can opt to take your order and go, and naturally, there will be no charge. Alternatively, you are welcome to stay and assess the situation to help in resolving the matter. <laughs> we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Warm regards, Jay's Chicken and Ribs. <laughs> Have you ever seen a business uh, share anything like that? Never in my many years of living have i ever seen that it's um it's absurd but like the the craziest part about it is them opening the door for anyone any customer who wants to try and help them resolve the situation mm, yeah it's like if you come in and see something we'll give you your your food for free of course but you can also assess the situation and if it's safe for you to do so intervene and, and help us uh, within our unique conflict. W when that post was made, uh, of course, people were, were freaking out and sharing it and writing like, what the hell are you talking about? It, it made its way to me through by by way of a bunch of listeners sharing it with me. And I thought for sure, I, I was convinced that it was some kind of new like kind of market like social media marketing kind of thing like because mm -hmm. it was getting shared everywhere and if you look at their posts you know for for years if they had four likes in one share they'd be doing good and then this one you know they post that and within an hour it has you know like a couple hundred shares a couple hundred comments and you know people are abuzz so it, it did work in getting some attention so i'm thinking is this some weird kind of marketing scheme so I then go on and much like everyone else, I think is it's, you know, when you see a post like that, I'm like, what is going in, going on in the comments? Uh, so I got, I pulled out a couple of them to give a sense of what people are saying. So someone named Kaylee Madden says, so basically you're telling me I can go in and referee your staff members in exchange for free chicken. 
And, you know, in, in response to Kaylee, I would say, yeah, that sounds like what they're offering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, should you be a qualified counselor? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Chicken's free. Ryan Dixon says these have to be joke. This has to be a joke to get attention on social media. And that's what I thought. And a, a lot of people suggested it was either a, a prank to get uh, attention on social media, or perhaps like a rogue employee took over their social media or they were hacked or something. But the post that I did see getting added to this, uh, the, in response to this con to this post, um, as well as getting made all over prior posts to ensure people saw it, I think gives light of what's actually going on. The, a person named Jen Matheson says, since you're deleting comments here, how about you tell us what's re how about you tell everyone what's really going on? You're firing someone for sticking up for the cooks. You guys have been stealing the cooks tips this entire time. Front staff gives them 50% of their tips and they saw none of it. You take their tips when the cooks mess up. You don't pay new hires for two weeks of training and you, Carol, and Carol's the, the owner. So they're naming the owner. They're saying, and you, Carol, laid hands on one of your employees today after she went in with all the labor laws that you violated. And you, Leo, who I think is Carol's hmm. partner, screaming and spitting in her face, you were that close. Very unprofessional how you treat your employees. No wonder you can never keep your employees. Such a shame that you destroyed a long running business in Cape Breton that you took over. Because I guess they weren't, they're not the original owners. They bought it. No, no, that, that's changed owners ownership before. Yeah. Mm. So this post by Jen kind of tells me that there's way more to it. And it seems to be a disagreement between the owners and at least one staff member relating to allegations that tips aren't making their way to the people that they should. So I think that's kind of the story that started to spread around. Um, I was surprised that the news didn't pick up on this because whenever in Cape Breton, like in a small town, whenever something you know goes viral online, generally the local news will hop and hop on it. But the only thing I've really seen was the uh, local newspaper, the Cape Breton Post, reached out to the police and did get a response saying that uh, the police did confirm that they responded to some kind of disagreement between staff at the restaurant, but that was it. Like there's no real mm -hmm. details came out of it, but the owner of Jay's chicken and ribs, um, provided a follow-up to address all the speculation and rumors that are going around since you, you did such a good job reading the first post. Why don't you jump into the second response? That is a, a follow-up post they made the next day after this whole mess had blown up. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. If truth could spread as quickly and widely as lies, this world would be a much better place. When I received a call from a stranger telling me that the front desk at my restaurant was unattended, claiming to be a loyal customer of 30 years who had been waiting for a long time without any service, I was shocked. I knew there should have been someone on duty. Afterwards, I asked the employee for an explanation, but instead of admitting any wrongdoing, she accused the customer of deliberately blaming her. I didn't want to argue with her, so I asked her to leave with dignity. <laughs> she refused and requested two more weeks. I agreed. On first day of those two weeks, she came to work, preparing to open as usual. However, when she needed to open the cash register, she hesitated. She falsely claimed to have forgotten her key and refused to go home to get it, later stating that she had lost it. She wouldn't let me check the cash register, perhaps out of fear of being discovered as the dishonest one when it came to money. <laughs> Eventually, the police arrived, unlocked the register, and witnessed the cash inside. Before the results were determined, she fled, which was not surprising. Later, she posted false information online, accusing the owner of stealing tips from the kitchen staff, which was simply ludicrous. <laughs> I don't even know how she found out about the kitchen staff's tip shortage. <laughs> and that's how it ends. <laughs> that is some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Um, and, and it's riddled with 
like inconsistencies like the for one the person writing this i think is pro pretty clearly the owner of the business like she blamed the owner which is ludicrous like all the only which person is who's... ludicrous because i'm the owner <laughs> i would <laughs> never um and then she says like there's these online or the owner or whoever makes this post is saying there's these online r rumors about a tip shortage but she admits there is one because she says i don't even know how she found out about the tip shortage <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know how she found out i wasn't tipping up the kitchen staff like i was supposed to <laughs> um man what a mess i can't actually follow what is happening i have a pretty good idea reading between the lines but i i don't necessarily understand what's going on there but i will say it is like ugly ugly drama between the owner and one staff member it seems or maybe multiple staff members to to take this to facebook and, and include your customers in this internal dispute is um one of the more bonkers things i've seen uh, a small business do you know if you if you're a a, you know, if, if you're a, an abusive parent, you know, you can have your children taken away from you. Uh, you know, if you're, a, you know, a, a, if you drink and drive, you can have your car taken away from you. But there's not a lot of circumstances when your phone or computer will be taken away from you. Is, there, you <laughs> no, know, the, is this one, are you saying? This is one where it's like, you know what, let's just take their take their access to to this venue away from them you yeah. know let's take away their computer take away their phone delete their social media accounts and just have them emotionally ride this out at home alone in privacy <laughs> yeah because you do get for you know restaurants they get um inspections for like cleanliness and you know food service kind of things uh that maybe should include uh, some kind of in, uh, a brief peruse of their social media content um one thing i will say is that the drama has not stopped after that post was made that you just read perhaps the more wild of the two of them the person who seems to be at the heart of the dispute the employee responded in a comment saying are you serious this did not happen and i'm calling the police again for defamation of character for everyone wondering these posts are about me and it is a total lie i complained about the tips and got fired Carol dragged me and Carol grabbed me and dragged me and I have proof of everything, including videos and voice notes. I have screenshots of her threatening me, saying I stole money when I didn't, and I have proof that I didn't. So and then like the emoji that shows someone with their hands up, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Anyway, I think, you know, if this ends up in like some kind of court for like the, I don't know, the labor board or what, or if there's a defamation case, I think this is one where you and I need to sit in and report uh on a trial absolutely um what a mess oh it's it's a huge mess it's it it's funny because when i used to work in an accounting firm you would have very skilled individuals that that are excellent at their trade you know they they can you know uh, uh the the best baker in the world doesn't necessarily run the best bakery Mm -hmm. uh you know the the best painter in the world doesn't necessarily run the best art gallery because running a business versus just being really good at something are two mm -hmm. different things so you see in the case like you could make the best chicken in the world i don't can't remember if jay's chicken is good or not but um but this is when someone who just is good at something opens a business and has no idea how to run a business and then they get a social media account and then this happens uh yeah but this is b beyond not being good at it like that's a, such a massive misstep um but i don't know it's it's fascinating when i'm in glace bay next i do plan to visit jay's chicken and ribs and if there is employees fighting inside i will assess the situation may intervene and if not I'm just going to walk out of there with my meal as the owner promised. Well, maybe I'll go in first before you go in and I'll start the fight. 
just start and I'll complaining. get the fight going so that you can come in and then intervene and then get the free chicken. And then <laughs> you take it to your car and both of us will enjoy it. Yeah, I'll order, you know, a meal for two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. We got some we got a plan, we got some free food coming. And we'll do this every night. Aaron, we got to wrap this up with one of the darker stories we've ever covered on Keep Canada Weird. And I mean that sincerely, but I think given the last few stories we've discussed, it it does kind of fall into line because this is an offbeat and unusual story that has largely played out online. It started on TikTok, but this is much darker than our normal uh, fare. This involves a Bear River, Alberta man who's accused of trapping and killing local cats. And the whole thing seems to be caught on film and posted to TikTok. Um, before we get into, actually, let's listen to the news clip and then we'll, we're going to dive deep into this one. But buckle up. I know you're a cat lover and I'm a cat a disclaimer lover. Disclaimer to anybody uh, out there. They This could be a little disturbing for any folks uh, yeah. who love, love animals. So. Yeah. Um, this one's going to get us upset, I have a feeling. But let's listen mm. to the news clip, and then we'll slowly dig into this story. Here it comes. We begin with a warning. This next story contains disturbing details about alleged animal abuse. Our CMP are looking into allegations that someone is trapping and harming cats in south-central Alberta. A video posted online shows a man and a woman rescuing a cat from a cage in the village of Big Valley. The cat is safe and okay. Jordan Canigan is in the village with more tonight. So Jordan, what are police saying about this? Tara, RCMP say they've received many, many reports of this incident. Some calls even coming from as far as Florida because the video is online. It was posted to TikTok and Facebook, receiving millions of views and alleges someone in the village of Big Valley is setting traps to catch cats, then drowning them. The video starts with a cat drenched in water in a cage. In it, you can hear the feline making some distressing sounds. The people in the video confront a man, questioning him, saying, how could you do that to a living creature? The man says cats have been coming into his yard and have been going after his dog. People in the village say several cats have gone missing over the last year. The man who took the video says the cat was in the cage and had been put into a large bucket filled with water when he pulled it out. I visited the property of the man in the video who is accused of doing this. Nobody responded to my questions. We are not showing him or naming him because there are not any charges. Now, only about 340 people live here and many are hesitant to speak because this is a very small community. The man and woman who rescued the cat say it is doing well and is recovering. Now, RCMP say it is early in the investigation and they have not yet arrested or charged anyone in this incident. Tara, back to you. Okay, Jordan, thank you. So let's talk about it at this point and then we will dig deeper into it. First thing is the allegation that cats are coming on this man's property in attacking his dog. Yeah, you know cats better than me. Do you think that is something cats would do? I guess I've never heard of it in an, like a, a problem way. Like I could see cats defending themselves against a dog that was getting too close to them or if the dog was being aggressive towards them. You know, the cat would definitely take some swipes at a dog for sure. But to be constantly aggravating a dog and attacking a dog without the dog asking for it i, I don't know I, i've never really seen that before yeah. to the point that the the man and he, i i understand the news doesn't want to show his face or say his name because he hasn't been charged or whatever but he seems to admit it we'll listen to the full video in a second because we can hear the people filming confronting him and he all but admits it but if it's to the i just can't imagine I could never imagine harming a cat, but for it to be such a problem that these cats are attacking his dog, that he needs to resort to trapping them in little cages and drowning him and drowning them like that seems excessively cruel. I hope it's illegal. I'll be upset if it's not illegal. 
Yeah, there are some laws there and you know, animal cruelty laws, I think, that would come into play here. But I just, you know, to be to be concerned with his dog, for someone to be able to actually drown cats is a, that's a next level thing, you yeah. know. Um, the right. one thing to trap them and, and bring them to the, you know, local as a local animal shelter or something. If, if they're maybe feral cats or whatever the case is, but I don't know. I mean, the, to be able to take it to that level and to be physically able to do that, uh, that's mm-hmm. a disturbing yeah. aspect of a human being. I agree. And you hear these stories of like, you know, someone leaving poison in like a public park for dogs to, you know, get at or something like that. I, I just think like, who are these venomous monster demons that could do that sort of thing? And it seems like this guy may be one of them. And I've watched, I, I went on TikTok and I found the original video, uh, the person posts it where they rescue the cat and confront the guy. And they have follow-up videos because they took the cat home. The cats luckily survived. They took the cat home and they're looking after it. And this is like, it's like just beyond a kitten. It's a tiny little sweet black cat. And it's not at all like something that you would worry about harming a dog or something. But let's listen to the longer version of the confrontation. We'll hear some of the back and forth between the people filming it and the man uh, who they claim to be responsible and who seems to admit it in the video. Listen to this. Like, Before he does something. No, no. You're not touching you're this not fucking touching thing. This <laughs> You've got issues, man. How dare you do that to a living creature? Yeah. Look at him. You want me to put you in a bucket of water? No. I'm just what? absolutely. Well, well, hey, well, well, all they come in is they go after my dog. Oh, bullshit. That's bullshit. Right. That yeah, dog. You had your, yeah, that dog. Yeah, you killed my cats. Remember I that? I didn't kill your cat. Oh, okay. What is this? What that the fuck is, is this? Congratulations, buddy. You are going to be famous. I don't know what to think here in that other than. I feel like this guy needs to be looked at like that is that is cruel sick stuff yeah he sounds like he's he's not playing with a full deck of cards so yeah I, I think I don't think any sane individual would do what that man is doing there's a, a famous documentary on I think it's on Netflix called don't F with cats yeah I, think, I uh, saw that documentary yeah I think a lot of people should learn from that for a few things for one the type of people who can F with cats are generally awful awful people capable of God knows what and also I think like there's this unwritten rule among sane people that if someone F's with cats or dogs We'll do everything we can to prevent that from happening. I think we all, all on behalf of all sane people, that's uh, how we feel. So I think this uh, th- that video ends with the person behind the camera saying, you're going to be famous, bud. Um, it seems like it's going that way. This video is shared far and wide to the point that, as we heard in the original news clip, the RCMP are getting calls from even outside of the country, people asking them to do something about it. And it seems to me the one way to get police to take action is to shine a spotlight on a situation and be like what are you guys going to do about this so i think they're going to do something they're going to have to do something if the law is being broken but it's an awful story yeah i wonder if it's going to get into some tricky situations where they're going to have to prove that he did it or like does the video footage like definitively prove that he did these things or are we just going off of these people who saved this one cat? They're probably going to have to provide something to say a hundred percent. Here's evidence, right? Yeah. Or it could get dicey in terms of um, um, the legal side of it. And I'd also be curious where the line is between like pest control and like cats because I know like if you have uh, rats on your property, you can just leave poison and traps everywhere and kill them and, you know, th- do the types of things that he's accused of doing this to this cat. I guess people probably do that towards rats or mice, but it just feels different with cats. And I hope our, you know, the legal system feels the same way.
doesn't feel right to me. Um, but we can't end on this sour of a note. Uh, before we do have more planned tonight, but do you, is there anything you can say to cheer us up? Can you lighten the mood? I don't know. Do we have any voicemails that are palate cleansers to end with, or should we go out on this very depressing <laughs> note? No, uh, we don't have a, a, I think we have a palate cleanser. We have a voice memo that comes to us from Kate, who is a listener in London. I say listener. I'm wrong. She's not a listener. She's a correspondent for the Keep mm, Canada yes, Weird that's Army. That's right. Here's what Kate has to share with us. This is short and sweet. Hello, Jordan and the other one. This oh. is Kate from the London office reporting <laughs> on the animal uprising. Sly foxes in the UK have been chewing through brake cables, sensors and other parts of cars resulting in thousands of pounds of damage. So far, no deaths have been attributed to these menaces, but it can only be a matter of time. <laughs> Kate is good. Um, well, hold on a sec. The other one? <laughs> Why? What do you call yourself? Oh, a human being. Oh, my gosh. I think Kate uh, wears her favorite on her sleeve. Yeah, yeah, I see why you picked this one as the palate cleanser. <laughs> oh. Hi, Jordan, and the other one. Uh, we've always tried to um, prevent any kind of like hashtag team Aaron, hashtag team Jordan kind of situation from playing out. But it seems Kate has brought that war uh, right to our doorstep. So let's not even address it. Let's just move on. She thinks of his equal. You no, know, she clearly doesn't. She clearly <laughs> has a strong distaste for me. She won't even utter my name. Yeah, the other one. The uh, other one. To be fair, uh, if someone said something bad about me on one of the uh, voice memos we aired, I would probably edit it out and not even mention it. So, oh, I'm never, sure 80% of our voicemails say something bad about you that you edit out. <laughs> um, Kate describes Foxes sabotaging cars. That is like, if you do want to get somebody, that is a good technique to do it. Uh, I've had some kind of animal. I think it was a squirrel built a nest in my car and it chewed up all the, I guess, insulation or something that's soundproofing tore it yes. all apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if an animal could do that to harm a human being, but they would need to understand the mechanics of a vehicle, how brakes work and what's connected to what. Um, I wouldn't put it past them, but I don't know. I think some animals are smart enough to understand how to build a car or how to take one apart. I just want to say this. I know we're trying, we're palate cleansing from the dark story, but if there are animals out there that know how to do this stuff, maybe they're the ones who can solve this problem in big Valley, Alberta with this trapping prick. Well, I don't know. It's, it's certainly going to, when you hear about stories like that, we're now this was supposed to be a palate cleanser, and yeah, now we're back to talking on. about the. <laughs> Sorry, it bothers me. I knew it was going to bother. I, I know, know, I know, but like we can't. We've we've already talked about it. Let's not even reference it. Okay, okay. going it further happen. in this. This okay. is our palate cleanser. So let's go back to how this listener hates me. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about that again. So, well, look, do you have any reason why past criticisms of you uh, surround? Your attitude, uh -huh. your personality, uh -huh. um, your Some opinions. Some people have even have issues with my name. You know, the fact yeah. that it's Handsome Aaron Airport and yeah. then they tune in and they like, tune in and realize that that may not be the case. And they, <laughs> they, they don't like that. They feel manipulated and lied to. Bit of false advertising, yeah 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 but but we we do gaslight like i've heard i've heard people be like he's not handsome I'm like what are you talking about like he's objectively he is <laughs> objectively yeah so uh i want this listener uh i'm not going to refer to her by her name until she refers to me by my name but i i want that listener to leave another voicemail and and explain yourself Mm -hmm. So we had two voicemails tonight. We had Tamara earlier, but you're talking about the other one. That's right. <laughs> that listener. 
so, I don't know if you'll get it. Um, we do offer. I probably will. And it'll turn into a several month story that will play out on this show in front <laughs> of everyone. Um, yeah, dear esteemed listener, you can start your you know calling back to Jay's chicken. Dear esteemed customer, it's a weird way to address your customers anyway in a social media. Esteemed, post. yeah, you don't know, you don't know ninety nine percent of them. Yeah, and you don't know if they're esteemed or or not. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I, we'll see. What do you want to hear from Kate? I missed that. Oh, sorry. What do you want to hear from the, the author of that? Yeah, I just wanted to hear her say my name. Okay. And then hang up. So the uh, a five second voicemail of her saying handsome Aaron Airport and then hanging up the phone. Hmm. Um, and she has to put some respect on it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go out on that. We'll see if that voice memo comes. Uh, let's wrap this up. But Aaron, until next time. Jordan, until next time. Don't put the dark story about killing cats at the end anymore it's hard to come yeah back no i i i kind of forgot about that story as we were rolling it along through the show and then it was like oh yeah so we're gonna end with that and it's gonna be very disturbing <laughs> but i'll say jordan until next time i'll always say your name I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mission to keep Canada weird. But let us also call out to you for even greater support. If something weird happens in your neck of the woods, make sure you let us know about it. Or if you have an opinion or thoughts on any of the stories we discussed tonight, we want to hear about that too. The best way to reach us is by sending us a voice memo at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We're excited to hear from you. Now, before we part here tonight, let me give some thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. I'd like to give a big shout out to the internet's favorite cult leader, Unicole, who provides the intro and outro voiceovers, and Monty Data, who contributes the music for this series. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. And on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the Nighttime Podcast Premium Feed. Libby, Patricia, and Finn, thank you for going premium. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a Premium Feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of the show. But the Premium Feed also gives you the episodes two days early, gives them to you ad-free, and gives you access to a full back catalog of Nighttime episodes. If that sounds good, you can go premium at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. And if you don't want to go premium, you can still support the show by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know what we're doing here. We appreciate your support in this. Now, until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast. 